Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got Monica Long, the president of Ripple, and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.39 trillion market cap. The market's off by 0.1% in the last 24. 62400 plus for Bitcoin, 300 plus for Ethereum, $108.6 billion market cap for Tether, and XRP has fell to the number eight spot. You heard that right. Number eight spot at 48 cents. We're off by 0.7 on the 24-hour. We're off by 20.3 on the seven day currently everything in the cryptocurrency space is falling like a manhole cover from the sky but don't worry about it because we got nick burefato here the head of digital asset sales from link to nick how you doing this morning uh, good morning how are you doing <laughs> well i'm doing good except for the way the market looks but i mean aside yeah. from that there's plenty of opportunity out here and seasoned veterans get it man you know, I, yeah, I'm glad you just said that, Brad, because I just want to do a shout out, you know, especially to the class of 2017. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I mean, there were certainly people in XRP sooner than that, but it seemed like the OGs of today were the class of 2017, the people that got in on 2017. So I would just tell all of our XRP brothers and sisters that, uh, We've been here before. Let, let's act like let's let's act like uh, we've been here before because we have. That's exactly right. And speaking of which, I've been accumulating along the way. It feels very good. You know, when you build that discipline, which I did not have in the early yeah. days. You know, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. It takes it takes conviction. I mean, you have to have conviction. You gotta have belief. It, you're it's right. A, it's not easy. It, the easiest thing in investing, whether it's crypto, whether it's stocks, whether it's private equity. The easiest thing is, is you know, to chase what everyone's chasing. It's we always say in crypto, chasing green candles. Yeah. But, but the you know the the smart investors are looking when things are maybe not perfect, and and you know, and, and right now it's not perfect. Um, but it's hard. You have to have conviction. Yeah, it takes a lot of work and research. Now, speaking of conviction, Cerebrus. Yes. Let's talk about this specific company on your platform. Why are people so excited about this? Because I am excited about this. You know, we we brought Cerebrus to the platform last year, and um, it, it is just one of the most exciting companies I've ever seen. You know, they make the largest and fastest AI chip in the world. And just to give you a perspective, mm. you know, the average chip is two inches by two inches in size. This thing's 12 inches by 12 inches. You can hold it in your hand. It's golden color. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it has four trillion transistors on that one wafer that you can hold in your hands Whoa. it's it's yeah it's absolutely mind-blowing um what it does the speed when you when you there there's so many you you google cerebrus um speed compared to nvidia and that i you know i can't really explain how they do these speed tests but it is absolutely the fastest thing out there um and and you know, one of the one of the big pieces of news is that Bloomberg two weeks ago broke the news that Cerebrus had picked Citigroup for their IPO. Yeah. So we we anticipated that they were going to be going public. Um, Bloomberg broke that news as soon as they broke the news. Our ability to get shares completely dried up. I oh. mean, it was yeah. It, you should the the, <laughs> the 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 member investments department at Link Two was was was. Uh, constantly on the phone with our originations department, which is the one that goes out and gets these shares to see what they can do. And these guys worked so hard and, and it took a few weeks. Um, actually, it took a couple of weeks. We were able to get some Cerebrus. Um, it's on the platform right now. There is absolutely no assurance that we'll ever have any other supply of it. So, oh. so I would just tell anybody, if you're interested in Cerebrus, Take a look. If you don't know anything about Cerebrus on your list of things to do today, I want you to Google Cerebrus because if you're an investor, you should at least know about this company and what's coming down. And Brad, I've got to share this story with you. <laughs> I was having lunch yesterday with a link to investor that actually lives in my town. And he's, he's not only a Cerebrus investor, he owns a very large AI company. Oh, 
and and which which was really interesting to hear. But 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 the most fun thing I heard from him yesterday, and I hope he's listening to your channel because he does every day. He said to me, his young, he has two young children, four and six years old, and one of his children, whenever a guest, whenever a guest comes to their house because they've heard you on the radio so many times in their dad's car, they say to a guest, "Come on in." <laughs> ever thought the, man that's the impact that you have on people and i <laughs> oh, just God. want you to know and, and uh and anyway someday you'll get to meet him and he looks forward to meeting you but um and uh, i, I do really, him I, yeah i gotta share that with you so yeah i would just tell you <laughs> tell everyone that's listening if you're looking for cerebus if you're interested in learning more about it come to the platform they have huge customers um astrazeneca glasgow um um uh, Smith Klein, Argon, <clears throat> a major financial institution, but they didn't disclose who. It's right on their website. Um, they have, oh, this Argon National Laboratory. They're accelerating cancer research, which is really cool. And then oh. the Energy Financial. Um, they have a uh, uh, Total Energies Research, which does you know energies research. Um, they're, they're just their their AI chip is being used in so many different industries. So anyway, check out Cerebrus. It's on the platform. And if you need anything, just reach out to us here at Link2. No doubt about it. And in 16 days, we're going to be seeing the Link2 fam at XRP Las Vegas. It's I gone. cannot wait. 15 it's days. Gone. Yeah. I know. I know. People are calling me every day saying, I'm, now I'm coming. Now I'm coming. Now yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> like, I'm getting these last minute calls. Hey, I want to come now. Like, like suddenly, like, you know, as it gets closer, people are like, I'm just going to do it, yeah. you know, so, so for anybody sitting out there that's about to have an I'm just going to do it moment, just go ahead and do it. No doubt about it. Nick Burefado, link to, thank you so much, my friend. We'll Thanks talk soon, him. man. Take care. You Bye. too. Bye. All right, there you have it. You know, I just love being able to catch up with Nick like that and find out exactly what's happening on the platform. All right, let's get into the news. Let's start with a little clarification. Yesterday, we were talking about this that was highlighted, which was the April 16th, 2024, 2 p.m. pre-trial conference, which actually, to clarify, did not happen. And uh, Stuart Alderati came out and said, I'm seeing some confusion on next steps with the SEC versus Ripple case. To clarify, Ripple will file its response to the SEC's request for penalties by April 22nd in another five days. And the SEC has until May 6th to reply. There is no final pretrial conference because the SEC dismissed the charges against Brad and Chris. So, that's the clarification and update right there. We want to keep you up to date as much as we can here. So let's keep moving to the next piece, which is this. The Bank of Korea is set to accelerate its central bank digital currency project. Listen to this number. Planning a pilot program with 100,000 participants to test the digital Korean won uh, by the end of this year, 2024. Loving that. And then there's this to remind everybody. It was announced by major British banks are testing tokenized deposits. Well, hang tight because I'm going to show you something in a minute that you're going to like a lot. It involves some speculation, but it is certainly some fun speculation. This is not speculation needed right here. Monica Long, the president of Ripple, who we're about to hear from in mass here. She's got a lot to say, and you're going to want every single bit of it. Brazil is quickly becoming a key crypto hub globally with its forward-thinking regulators and clear policies. TradFi engagement and a growing developer community. Thanks to Web Summit Rio for having me. Absolutely. And I tell you, Monica is an OG. She's been at Ripple almost since day one. And I tell you, it's no mistake why she is the president at Ripple. You're going to hear excerpts from her time at this conference. And shout out to XRP Drops for getting all of these highlights here. One, the collapse of crypto-friendly banks. And she really makes a great point here, talking about the Silvergate Bank and, or, yeah, this, yeah, uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank and, and the other bank collapse. And essentially... She goes on to talk about regulatory clarity in the U.S., her journey at Ripple, tokenized T-bills, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I tell you the stablecoin bill is so important. 
because it's not just about having a fully regulated stable coin for your on and off ramps, which will happen through a stable coin bill, but it's about real world asset tokenization because that's what it's going to allow for. Yeah, that's how big that is. Well, let me get here and just hit play on this and let Monica tell y'all what's going on because she knows. Answer, Stefan. Here we go. Well, of significance of the three banks that were kind of the first to fall over the three S's, Silvergate and Signature Bank in the world, of, so Ripple's in the cryptocurrency blockchain space, and so those two banks in particular were very systemically important to the cryptocurrency ecosystem. It was commonly the two ways to get U.S. dollar, connect the U.S. dollar system into the crypto ecosystem. So it had a pretty consequential effect on the whole, the whole crypto world and ecosystem. Flash forward to 2024, where we are today, there, there haven't really been other US banks who have leaned into being a transaction bank of record to different crypto companies. Uh, so they, I think there's still, a, there's an overhang of risk aversion, I would say. And I think that also is somewhat an after effect of the, situ the fraud and uh, activity related to FTX and Binance. I remember at the time speaking to a fact that um, I mean the so the very premise of a blockchain is you now have a new financial rail where there's open access all around the world to mm -hmm. something that's instantaneous where you can transfer and move and exchange different forms of value all over the world really quickly and seamlessly. So we've applied it to payments. So exactly your use case of getting money just across the border between Canada and the U.S. Far. in a cost-effective and, and transparent way. Um, that's exactly the problem that we seek to solve. I would say our, our business, our network has had the most uptake places where there has been regulatory clarity for licensed financial institutions who are our customers to use a crypto rail. So that's places like Singapore and Dubai and even Europe. Uh, Europe, 27 countries came together to form the MICA regulation, which is a common framework to handle crypto assets, whereas the US there's you know, a regulatory battlefield between the different agencies to, yeah. to fight for territory. And do you see the crypto industry at large? I think regulation is good, clear regulation though. So mm -hmm. we're, we have kind of chaotic, yeah. a ca chaotic regulatory climate for crypto in the US right now. Companies like Ripple and Coinbase and Circle, these, we're US based companies and we actually kind of, we hold a really high bar for meeting compliance. Uh, the same bar that banks meet for KYC, AML, OFAC, BSA, I mean, we, we follow all the same standards. And the businesses that are operating outside of the US where they're performing regulatory arbitrage, you think of the FTXs of the world, um, that's where you see the trouble. And then there's this kind of political weight thrown into focusing on the fraud cases, whereas the actual really useful use cases for the technology kind of get suffocated. Everett, I well wonder said. how will that impact your business? Yeah, it does feel very cyclical, right? Like the a roller coaster, maybe that's a better description. So I've been at Ripple for 11 years, and so I've seen a few of these uh, booms and bust cycles. Coming up this year is the Bitcoin halving in April. So this is a four-year cycle, and with more constrained uh, supply and increased demand, there's this is kind of why we see this, this boom cycle uh, continuously happening. The introduction, the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETFs and the introduction of those products in the US has been very meaningful for the institutionalization and legitimization of the industry. And I think that, well, actually an interesting fact is, because you might kind of attribute it to, well, there's just a lot of excitement about the halving, but if you rewind time a little bit, Goldman and BlackRock and Listen. Robinhood, these large institutions launched their kind of crypto products in the bear market. Uh, like Goldman introduced their $100 million uh, tokenization fund uh, to tokenize bonds. That was in the bear cycle. So I think that there's a real long-term buy-in and belief by the institutions that this technology is not going away. Right, and also- And there you, <laughs> listen to this. Well, I think a belief in big- Possibly, who knows? Tokenized T-bills are kind of the new uh, preference to stable coins because you can get yield on them. <laughs> Tokenized T-bills, you get the yield on them. You know what? Monica's so smart. You, you know, forget about it. It's next level with this lady. Uh, look, um, you, how are you tokenizing those T-bills? 
you need a stable coin bill to do it properly, right? Ripple to issue USD stable coin, bringing more utility and liquidity to the XRP ledger, not to mention the fact that a stable coin bill would allow for the tokenization of other products too, like commodities and I'm sure derivatives. And it looks like the stable coin bill or stable coin that is being built on the XRP ledger is being done so from uh, the Ripple UK division, as it says, senior software engineer for stable coin, London, UK. Shout out to Bank XRP for that one. And then there's this. If we're racing to T plus one settlement time, which we showed you yesterday to DTCC and Robinhood and other entities, just like what you're seeing here, all moving to T plus one and eventually T plus zero. And this begins on May 28th this month. Look, we have to understand how are they getting that way without the use of distributed ledger technology? How are they really truly going to get to T plus zero without using things like tokenized products? I don't think they do. So we're on the edge of something really massive. And what we're talking about now is changes inside the financial system. So uh, if we get that stable coin bill this year, I'd say watch out because if this is changing over May 28th, we better get some kind of bill that allows for what is changing. How are we moving to T plus one again and T plus zero if we don't allow for these new things like DLT and innovation of stable coins and tokenized products? So looking at that makes you all of that information makes you look at this chart and boy if this chart doesn't say it here this is back in the day when 2017 2018 happened right and here we are watching this setup over the last four to five years and look at where we're at here this is where we are and we dipped down and broke that now i tell you i can't tell you if it's going to continue to go down sideways or go up into the moon i don't know the answer excuse me what I do know that I'm so excited about for is I've been here since all the way back in here. All the way back in here I've been in here. And I'm super excited that I'm still here when we got here. And I don't know where it goes, but I know one thing. I'm here to find out. And I can't even begin to tell you how super excited I am to watch all of this play out. And speaking of playing out, Egg Crypto tells us here we could see as much as a 55% increase on a price rally potential here. Now that is pretty remarkable. And I thought this chart was super fitting for today. And as he has said, what's next? We anticipate a move towards 120 to 150, followed by a confirmation of a breakout above $2. This could potentially lead to gains of 15 times 27 times and even 55 times as referenced in the p tweet before this so look this is where we are you see it you understand there's the 41 cent mark right here right and here's where we are that's dipped this is the range he's showing we're in this area we're, we're you could see that we are at a crossroads here right and where this plays out, where this goes, and this is a two-week chart, it looks like right here. So we're watching XRP to USD. Again, I start getting super excited when we get above that $2 mark, that $2, $2.20 range, because I know that all technical analysts, including AgRag Crypto, are super bullish about those $10, $15, $27 dollar marks that they all see on the charts for so long. So this is that we're at the we're at the foot of it here, I believe, where we get to see all of these things potentially play out or not. And that's super exciting for me. We're going into the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are covering what is the mystery of Washington, D.C. And boy, are you going to love what's inside of this video. We're going into the Freedom Zone right now. Not financial advice to me or anyone else. Come on in. All right, let's.